R-T-L-E power. Don't call it a comeback. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles never went away, and have always existed in some form since the 80s. While their comics and cartoons have always been pretty well received, TMNT video games have a bit of a checkered past at best. With Platinum Games in charge of their latest digital adventure, do we finally have a truly great TMNT game? Eh. First of all, can we just talk about these graphics? Characters and backgrounds seem ripped straight from the pages of IDW's current Ninja Turtle comics, using a slick cel-shaded aesthetic. Perhaps they don't pop quite like Wind Waker's visuals, but this may be the best effort yet at emulating comic book art in a video game. The combat too is pretty great. That goes without saying in a Platinum Games production, but they deserve praise nonetheless. There are basic light and heavy attacks to string together into combos, along with a third-person shooter-esque way of hurling shurikens. This perhaps could have carried the game, but Platinum also added some fantastic ninjutsu special moves. These offer a wide variety of effects, from slowing down time, to summoning UFO sidekicks, and even causing an impromptu dance-off. Each turtle can equip four upgradable ninjutsu moves, with new ones unlocked while progressing through story mode. Needless to say, this is a thoroughly enjoyable combat system. Unfortunately, it's overkill. Most of the enemies you'll battle hardly put up a fight on normal mode, having sluggish AI. Basic foot soldiers flood areas, sometimes joined by bomb throwing variations. Slightly more difficult swordsmen show up, and rock-like aliens with hammers or lasers also appear. Mausers and Utrams pop up from time to time, but they mostly serve as jokes, dying in one or two hits. That would be okay if the bosses weren't such pushovers. Out of the nine bosses you fight at the end of every stage, only two put up a challenge or require specific tactics to beat. The others can be killed simply by wailing on them and switching between the turtles to use every ninjutsu. So you may want to start on hard mode, because normal mode is basically a breeze. As for the stages themselves, the setup harkens back to the classic arcade game, in so much as you drop into an area fighting random foes. When April finally chimes in and tells you to use turtle glass, much like Arkham Asylum's detective vision, you spot your objective with x-ray vision and move toward it. The seemingly random objectives mostly boil down to kill all enemies, or defeat every helicopter. There's some variation here and there, like hacking terminals or defusing bombs, but it never gets that interesting or even fun. Until late in the game, but I won't spoil those. Complete three or four objectives, then it's boss time. Rinse and repeat nine times. The biggest problem with this game is that it never quite feels fun. The visuals, environments, and combat mechanics are all screaming to be part of a better game. Perhaps something more along the lines of Arkham Asylum, rather than this largely arcade-like experience. Another problem is the length. When you know the environments aren't worth exploring due to a severe lack of content, the story can be finished in 3.5 to 4 hours on normal mode. That's not great, especially when entire environments were reused for several stages. No matter the lies April O'Neil tries to beat you. Speaking of April, man is she annoying, at least she doesn't need to be rescued this time, but her only role here is Captain Obvious, spouting dialogue that never needed to be said. I can't believe the foot would stoop this low. You have to find a way to stop them. Just keep a cool head no matter what happens. Please reach the scene of the crime. The weather out there is insane. You found them! It must be wishing Donnie's turtle communicator had a mute button. If you're wondering why I haven't mentioned the plot, there's a reason. There really isn't one. Krang and Shredder have teamed up again, and the Turtles must stop them. This game may look like IDW's comics, but its simplicity aligns more with the original cartoon. That's fine, but I was hoping for something slightly darker. Taken on its own merits, TMNT Mutants in Manhattan gets a 5.5 out of 10. It isn't bad, but it also isn't very memorable, especially for a $50 game. I actually had more fun with the largely disliked TMNT Out of the Shadows game from a couple years ago which I definitely didn't expect. Hopefully a sequel to Mutants in Manhattan, if there is one, gets a little more care and attention put into it. That would be nice. For a more in-depth written review, head to middleofnowheregaming.com. This has been Chris Cobb from Middle of Nowhere Gaming. Peace! Thank you for playing.